All right, we're gonna start with section 6.6, .6, mounted units. I've got a couple examples laid out here for you, a horse mounted unit and a motorcycle mounted unit. Now, for stacking purposes, motorcycle units, or mounted units rather, are considered the same as squads. However, the difference is you can only have two in a single hex. So if both of these units were in a hex together, that's fine. You could not have another mounted unit with them, but you could take and have a, another infantry squad with them in the same hex, and that would not exceed the three stacking limit that you have, so that would be fine. Now, mounted units are easy to distinguish from others. They are the same size as squad counters, but their movement factor has a red number that designates them as a mounted unit and they are also going to use the O column on your uh, terrain effects chart that tells you how many movement points it takes to take and move into whatever hex you're moving into. Now, they also do have some interesting modifiers when it comes to being fired upon and it depends on what state they are in on which modifiers are going to apply, okay? So, if a mounted unit is marked with a moved, a hit and run, or a assault move counter, then they are going to receive a negative one firepower when being fired upon, or a plus one to the ordnance table when being fired upon, if they have one of these three counters on them. However, if they don't have one of those three counters on them, it's the exact opposite. The, uh, the attacking unit is going to get a plus one to firepower when firing on them or a minus one on the ordnance table when firing on them. Now, they will not spawn a hero on a damage check. So other squads, when they're fired on, if they roll a one on a damage check, there is that potential for a hero creation. You're not going to have that with mounted units. If you roll a one, it's just a one, you just leave it alone. Also, single man counters. So we have a leader right here, let's say stacked with this motorcycle unit. They can take and move with a mounted unit as if they are mounted themselves. So we can see our leader has a movement factor of six, but the motorcycles have a movement factor of 20. The uh, leader, single man counter, could take and move with them up to 20 hexes or 20 movement points worth of movement just as if he were mounted uh, as long as he is stacked with them. Now, I'm also going to take and address a separate part of the rule book here because it is pertinent to what we're talking about. Uh, section 15.5.1 is on continuous movement. All right, so let me break this down for you guys. Continuous movement is about leaving certain movement markers on a mounted unit in between uh, different operation phases and turns to maintain their bonus. So let's say that this motorcycle unit had performed an assault move on this operations phase and we're done, we're going to our admin phase, okay? Instead of removing the assault move counter like we would normally do, you could instead take and turn that counter 180 degrees and what you're doing is you're signaling that that unit is not stopping. They're continuing their movement, whatever they were doing, whether it was moved, hit and run, assault move, and they're going to maintain those modifiers they have for movement. Because if you think about it, let's look here for an example. Let's say these American units are here in the building and they're firing onto the motorcycle unit. If you did not use the continuous movement then if one of these squads were to fire on them, they would fire on them with a firepower of three because they would have their innate two with a plus one for no movement marker on them. However, if you do the continuous movement and you leave that movement marker on them, then they would no longer fire with a two, they'd be, or with a three rather, they would fire with a one because now it would still be that minus one to firepower <clears throat> since they have that movement marker on them still. Now, mounted units do have the ability to dismount. If you take and look, I'll blow it up here on screen for you guys. 
at the very top of the counter, you're gonna take and see a small set of numbers to the left of where the morale is. That is the squad uh, stat of the squad once they've dismounted, okay? So let's say our motorcycle mounted unit here wants to conduct a dismount. You would take, mark them as abandoned because you can't take and re-enter them once you've dismounted. And it takes half their movement point to do it and you'll take the counter that is represented on the top of uh, the motorcycle counter. It shows the stats and you simply put it there and they do have half their movement points left to spend and you could take and use the rest of those movement points to continue moving or perform something like a close assault. Now I say close assault specifically because you do need to take and dismount uh, mounted units to take and perform a close assault. They can't do it while mounted. So that is one specific reason why you would dismount a uh, mounted unit and just have them turn into a regular squad and perform as normal from that point on. Now, dismounting does can uh, count as a movement because you are spending movement points. So you would be subjected to op fire. So again, if this motorcycle here were to dismount right where it is, these airborne squads would be able to op fire onto them since they have spent movement points, just like any other uh, op fire situation. <clears throat> Finally, as far as support weapons are concerned, a mounted unit is not the same as a squad when it comes to them. A cavalry mounted unit can simply carry a support weapon. They can't use it. They simply will carry it around the map and they can drop it off and switch with others during the rally phase if they want, but uh, they cannot fire the support weapon themselves. Motorcycle units, however, can fire a <clears throat> support weapon. <clears throat> they can take and fire a support weapon that has a firepower no greater than two, and it can't be an ordnance support weapon. So like this one here that I've got shown with them, the motorcycle unit could use that support weapon. 